Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this traditional Chinese woodworking hand plane. Now I got the idea of this hand plane from a video that I saw of a Chinese master making a plane very similar to this one. So if you're interested in watching that video, go ahead and follow the link in the description. He also made other uh, Chinese woodworking tools and I thought uh, there's about seven that I wanted to make. So I hope this will be the first of seven different Chinese woodworking tools that I will make for myself and hope to share the process with you. I started the project by squaring up a piece of cherry as well as a piece of rosewood. The cherry is for the top, it's stable and it's a little softer and easier to work with. And the rosewood is for the sole of the plane. It is also stable but is also very hard. This laminated block is about 24 inches long. Eventually I cut it down to 15 inches because I realize a lot of my large planes just collect dust. So I've laid out the, all the parts of the plane here and all the places I need to cut out uh, on the top and also on the bottom here. The, the details of it um, is in a link in the description exactly how to make all the measurements. The only thing I'll mention here is that the Chinese plane, one of the distinguishing features is that the, uh, uh, the blade is offset from center. So, sh so the front of the plane will look bigger than the back of the plane. Chopping out the throat is definitely the most time consuming as well as the most tedious part of this project. So as I was chopping the middle out, I remember from a recent video that I should cut this handle hole out first. Um, otherwise, there's a good chance this whole thing will blow apart as I'm cutting it if I had this middle part cut out first. So I didn't dig very far, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark out the handle position and chop it out. Not that the handle hole is finished, it's time to get back onto the throat. So periodically I would check to make sure that the bedding angle is at 45 degrees. When opening the mouth, I recommend to go nice and slow. Because if you rush like I did, you're likely to make a mistake and crack open the sole and have to make a repair. Once the mouth is open to the proper size, it's now time to turn my attention to the wedge mortise. To open up the wedge mortise, I am pushing the blade of the saw against the bed so that I could really follow that angle. The second cut here is not that critical. As long as the two sides are symmetrical, it should be okay. If you don't have a pole saw like the one I used in the previous shot, a hacksaw should work just as good. Alright, so I finished cutting this part here and I'm going to try to fit the blade now. I haven't tried it yet. So I got the blade here. I've taken the chip breaker off. I don't need this part to do this initial fitting. So what I need to do is, um, it needs to go in there real tight. I need to slide it in. So I'm about a centimeter from getting this thing all the way in. I'm looking from back here, it looks like this side is rising up slightly so I'm going to back this out and to back the plane out okay. so hopefully you can see that as the blade was trying to go in it sort of dug onto the side that's fine but here it's um, get caught on this piece here as it's digging in so it's causing it to rise up on this side. Alright, so I managed to get the blade in there and it's um, laying flat against the back here at a 45 degree angle. But as you can see the mouth is too small so I think I need to move this over at least two millimeter because it still needs to accommodate the chip breaker. Once the wedge mortise was opened up to the correct size I decided to go ahead and make a temporary wedge. I made this wedge from a piece of basswood. My goal was to use this piece of basswood wedge to do the rough sizing and then make a better wedge later.
that's what is great for rough sizing because it is such an easy wood to work with. It's very soft and very easy to carve. And that's important to get a nice and tight fitted wedge inside the wedge mortise. I trimmed this wedge slowly and I tested it often until I got a good fit between the plain iron and the body. Alright, so I got this thing to fit in there. It's okay. I think um, I think it's enough to get this thing going. I got this piece of uh, soft pine set up here. Uh, the blade's not sharp. Uh, so to use this, um, you simply make sure this wedge is in there tight. Move the blade forward by tapping the iron down and move it back or loose by tapping the back of the uh, so when you tap behind it this thing gets loose so tighten the wedge check your blade position if you need to change anything it's really dull let's see though we should take nine shavings off of this this pine's pretty soft So even with the doll blade, we're getting some shavings. You can take a, a larger cut here. So there you go. I think it'll work. I think it's time now to get the. Um, make this thing look a little bit prettier, but I have a handle made somewhere. So I made this handle and it's close to fitting. It's still a little bit big. So I'm going to get this handle fitted in this thing right here. Before I go to um, do the final shaping, I still haven't cleared out the, um, I don't know what you call this, the trough I guess, the front part of the plane for the um, shavings to come out of. So. The handle should fit tightly because a loose handle could cause blisters. One piece of advice I would give is to not pull on the handle with your face over the handle because I got smacked in the face and I have video footage to remind me of that. It's a good looking handle there. Once I cut out the cheeks, the major parts of the plane itself is finished. What's left is cosmetics as well as some uh, adjustments to make the plane more comfortable to use. Alright, so now I'm ready to do the final shaping here. I've marked the center line along the top here. What I need to do next is mark a nose line here. So I'm putting this line at 8 degrees. So it looks something like this with a slant in here and then a slant out there. I'm going to do most of the roughing out with an axe. An axe is actually an integral part of Chinese woodworking. There's an old saying that a dull axe is faster than a smart saw. After the rough shaping was completed, I went on to use a rasp and a file to do the finer shaping, and finally smoothed it down to about 320 grit. And after a couple of coats of linseed oil, the plane is ready to go. The standard way of holding this plane is to grasp it by the handle with the index finger on the side and the thumb behind the iron. They can be overlapped or they could be parallel. And you're basically controlling the up and down motion with your finger and your palm or thenar muscle. When entering a cut, push down with the index finger. When finishing a cut, push down with the thumbs. One thing I really like about this plane is that I can use two hands to push in a symmetrical fashion. Really, this plane can be used by pushing or pulling with or without the handle. Well, everyone, uh, that's about wraps up this project. I hope you enjoyed it. The next project I want to do is a Chinese frame saw. And it looks a lot like a German or European frame saw, but it's used very differently. So if you want to keep up with the sort of projects I'm working on in my studio, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you next time.